Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Really Show. I'm your host, Aaron Ross. Ah. Today's show, World War II's The Fighting Nisi, America's most decorated regiment. If you like the show, we would really like it if you would subscribe, baby. Uh. December 7, 1941, a day that will live in infamy. Shortly after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, the American government, as many of you I'm sure are aware, became very distrustful of its American citizens of Japanese descent. The American government's paranoia about covert Japanese Americans loyal to the emperor sabotaging the American war effort led to President Roosevelt's signing of Executive Order 9066. This led to 120,000 Japanese Americans being interned in camps in various states in the country. Interestingly, the Japanese Americans in Hawaii were not interned. They made up about a third of the population of the state, and there was very real concern that their internment would lead to economic collapse in Hawaii. Of course, many in the military soon were expressing their concern over Japanese Americans serving in the armed forces, and measures were quickly taken to isolate those currently serving. Even the Japanese Americans in the ROTC who were asked to help defend the island after the attack were affected. Sucks. After their dismissal, eager to prove their loyalty, they formed a civilian aid group, the Varsity Victory Volunteers, or VVV. They provided labor for the massive construction of U.S. military bases in the Pacific. And around the same time, approximately 1,400 Nisi of the Hawaiian National Guard had their weapons taken away and were brought to the mainland where they were designated the 100th Infantry Battalion. Of course, at first, the Nisi were distrusted by their fellow servicemen, but eventually proved their loyalty and won over the trust of the military. Soon after, President Franklin D. Roosevelt authorized an all-Japanese American fighting force comprised of men from Hawaii and the mainland. This became the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, made up in part of members of the VVV and to which the 100th was attached. 442nd's motto was, go for broke. Boom! 442nd was soon sent to Italy for their first experience in combat. After, the unit was transferred to France where they became part of the 36th Division. The commanding officer of the 36th was Major General John E. Dahlquist. He had gained a good reputation as an administrator before the war, but had little actual experience or knowledge of infantry battle tactics. Worse yet, Dahlquist had a bad temper, felt he should be obeyed without question, and had a tendency to make decisions on impulse, disregarding any input from anyone else. One of the early missions that Dahlquist sent the 442nd on was to capture the town of Briers. Dahlquist was adamant that there were no German soldiers and the mission would be easy. Unfortunately, the opposite was true and the 442nd took heavy losses during the four-day battle before capturing the town. Apathetic or just oblivious to their heavy casualties and fatigue, Dahlquist ordered them to take the next town. They had eight straight days of heavy combat before the general would let them take a rest. Around the same time, Dahlquist had ordered his first battalion of 275 men to advance, assuring them that little resistance would be met as well. Once again, he was wrong. Wrong! The first battalion became pinned down by the Germans and cut off from retreat. And they dug in, using their only working radio to send word of their dire situation. After getting word about the 1st Battalion, which became known as the Lost Battalion, General Dahlquist abruptly ended the 442nd's brief rest. Their new orders? Rescue this Lost Battalion. 1st <clears throat> Battalion, Lost Battalion, 1 potato, 2 potato, 3 potato, 4. For six days, this Lost Battalion was cut off and surrounded in the Vosges Mountains of northeastern France, not far from the German border. The Germans were slowly tightening the noose. They were almost out of supplies. Ammunition, food, medical. The dead were piling up. Many of the men were wounded, some suffering from trench foot. They were just hanging on. The 442nd was four miles from the trapped battalion. They had to travel through dense forest, deep muddy trails, German roadblocks, landmines, and numbing cold. After days of these awful conditions and German attacks, 
General Dahlquist would often criticize their progress, often pushing them to do more. Artilleryman Don Shimazu was noted as saying that General Dahlquist had ordered them to fire on a particular set of coordinates. If they had done so, they would have hit the lost battalion, probably killing them all. Fortunately, they didn't listen to that command. As the days went by and supplies dwindled, the 1st Battalion held their position against the German attacks. Head of the Lost Battalion, Lieutenant Blonder, was later quoted as saying, We were not going to give up. The Germans demanded surrender several times, but that was not an option. We were going to hang in there or die. The Germans had a good position at the top of a steep hill, well hidden by their surroundings. General Dahlquist pushed for a charge, and he got it. The men had had enough and were determined to end it. Live or die fixed bayonets, and charged. Colonel Purcell led the charge, yelling up the hill, firing his 45 at the Germans. Private Barney Hajiro was one of the first to follow the colonel, racing up the hill well ahead of the rest of his company. Astonishingly, Hajiro wasn't killed or even injured. He took out two machine gun nests and a couple of snipers. An action, along with his earlier acts of courage, earned him the Distinguished Service Cross which was upgraded to the Medal of Honor in 2000. Unfortunately, many of the private's fellow Nisei soldiers didn't fare as well. Fellow soldier Lawson Sakai was later quoted as saying, they see one guy going, then five or six guys, then others join with them. By that afternoon, the 442nd had taken the hill, but at a cost, with heavy casualties. The men of the 442nd later called it the Bonsai Charge. And after that, they had still not reached the lost 1st Battalion. With many perils still in front of them, they resumed their advance the following morning. As the 442nd was nearing the 1st Battalion, Sergeant Bill Hull of the lost battalion recalled hearing noises from the rear position and thought that the Germans were near and that all would soon be lost. Fellow 1st Battalion soldier Edward Guy also heard the soldiers closing in. Filled with dread, thinking it was the Germans, he strained to see their position and to his amazement and joy saw fellow American soldier Sergeant Matt Sakumoto of the United States 442nd. Guy ran to Sakumoto and hugged him. Sakumoto, unaffected by Guy's emotional greeting, just asked him, do you guys need any cigarettes? Sakumoto was soon joined by several of his regiment. It was over. They had reached their objective and saved the lost battalion. By the time it was over, the 442nd had taken 814 casualties to rescue the 1st Battalion's 211 men. The 442nd Regimental Combat Team became the most highly decorated unit of its size in the history of the United States Army, receiving an unprecedented eight presidential unit citations, 21 medals of honor, and 9,486 Purple Hearts. Not long after the end of World War II, the survivors of the 442nd marched down Constitution Avenue in Washington, D.C. Yes, they were the first military unit returning from the war to be reviewed by President Harry S. Truman. Truman told them that day, you not only fought the enemy, you fought prejudice, and you have won. Boom! Well, that's our show for today. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments area. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. The red light is the go light. The American government's paranoia about covert fudge.